Oh, hello there. I didn't hear you come in. Today, on Documentaries in 5 Minutes, the topic, John Donne. His story starts in the year 1572. He was born in London, England, to a Catholic family during a strong anti-Catholic period. Today, we will hear the rest of his story and talk to some experts about his poetry. From John Donne's birth in London, he was plagued with illness and continued to suffer diseases throughout his life. At age 11, he enrolled at Oxford and studied law for three years. At that point, he transferred to Cambridge. Although he completed his studies, he never got a degree due to his faith. He would not give the oath of supremacy. At this point in his life, Don's brother was thrown in jail for his Catholic faith. While in prison, his brother died and made him his question his faith more. After his brother's death in prison, he wrote many religious poems and decided to convert to the Anglican Church. He then continued his study of law at Lincoln's Inn at the age of 20. At the conclusion of his studies, Don went on a naval expedition to Spain until his return in the year 1598. On this trip, he wrote some well-known poems such as The Storm and The Calm. Upon his return, he became the private secretary to Anne Moore's uncle. They fell in love and became secretly married. She was 16 years of age. He was temporarily imprisoned by his new uncle and stayed on bad terms with his new father-in-law. John Dunn then began working for Thomas Morton, who was an anti-Catholic pamphleteer. He worked there for three years, and after a few attempted suicides, he decided to make up with his father-in-law. During this time, he wrote one of his most well-known pieces, Pseudo Martyr, which won him favor with the king. Then, in 1615, he became a priest of the Anglican Church. Here, he gave some sermons that are now famous. In 1615, he became a royal chaplain and continued in 1621 to be appointed the dean by St. Paul's for 10 years. Soon, John Dunn became obsessed with death after he was diagnosed with an unknown terminal illness. John gave his own eulogy for his funeral and he had a portrait done of him on his death shroud. In 1631, John Dunn died and most of his well-known poems were published after his death. We now go to a poem by John Donne, written through the perspective of a young woman who cannot find a man to love, so she reserves to loving herself. Now, the reading and analysis of Self-Love by Casey Burgundy and Robin Rogers. He that cannot choose but love and strives against it still, never shall my fancy move, for he loves against his will. The young woman in this poem is saying that she could never love a man who loves so deeply that he has no control over who he loves. She's saying that she could never love someone like that because he loves regardless of choosing whether he wants to love someone. Nor he which is all his own and can at pleasure choose. When I am caught, he can be gone, and when his list refuse. She cannot love a man who puts himself before others because then he can choose whether or not he wants to love a person and then he might leave when it was inconvenient for him. Nor he that loves none but fair, for such by all are sought. She cannot love someone who loves all the beautiful women because the beautiful women are those who are sought after. Nor he that can for foul ones care, for his judgment then is not. The woman can't love someone who loves ugly women because then he has poor judgment. Nor he that hath wit, for he will make me his jest or slave. She couldn't love a man who thinks he's so smart, because then he would think he's dominant over her. Nor a fool, for when others, he can neither. The woman couldn't love a stupid man, because then he's helpless. Nor he that still his mistress pays, for she is thralled therefore. She couldn't love a man who treats a woman to material objects, because then she's bound to him. Nor he that pays not, for he says, within she is with no more. She also can't love a man who gives her nothing, because then the man thinks that she's worthless. Is there then no kind of men whom I may freely prove? I will vent that humor then is in my own self-love. The woman is really questioning whether there is any man who will ever be perfect for her. Then she decides there's no man who will ever be perfect for her, and she's just going to love herself. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week on Documentaries in 5 Minutes. 
Join us next week for our special one-week anniversary episode. Stay tuned.